Good morning everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how I made this painterly effect that is based on a method by Cody Gindi. That is to paint over a baked, object space normal map, but instead of using dedicated painting program, I used curves and geometry nodes in Blender. This is the geometry node setup that I've put together to do just that. And I've compiled them into this, hopefully, easy to use setup that I created to help you to paint over the normal map. You can download the setup on my Gumroad for free. I'll leave the link for that in the description. Before we get started, I would like to mention the two biggest inspirations for this project. The first one, is of course, this video by Cody Gindi where he went into detail to explain and demonstrate how the effect was created and, why it works in the first place. It's very simple, and very easy to implement, but, the result is just, really great. So if you haven't seen the video, please do so, otherwise the video you're currently watching won't make any sense. The second one is this video by Alan Wyatt, also known as, Tra Digital, where he shows how he created his live paint filter using geometry nodes, to turn your 3D render into a masterpiece painting. I think this is the best one of its kind that has ever been made. I even copied some of the nodes and tricks he used in the filter that he shared alongside the video. So be sure to check them out. I'll leave the link for both videos in the description. With that out of the way, let's get started. This will not exactly be a tutorial, I'm not gonna explain every single node I used. I'm just gonna go over the general stuff of how this setup was put together. So, it begins with drawing curve or spline, using the draw tool in the curve edit mode. Then we take that curve to geometry nodes, turn them into points, instance a plane or grid on those points, control the size of the instanced planes using the curve radius. After that, we take the object which we will paint over to geometry nodes as well, capture the normal to use later, and then we lay it out in the UV coordinate so we can easily sample and render the normal. To sample the normal itself, we will use the sample nearest surface node, then store them in those instances. And, the geometry node setup is pretty much finished there. The rest is just added to make it easy to paint, and render out those brushes. To make those instanced planes to actually look like brushes, we will use this kind of texture atlas with brush alpha masks. I'll go more into it later in the video. But for now, let's see how to use this setup. After you download the blend file and open it by default, this is what you would see. I've included one object here, and a curve object, which have the geometry node setup that I already drawn as an example. When you use this, you can delete the object, and delete the curve spline in the edit mode, and then append your own object into this file. But for this example, I'm just gonna duplicate the curve painter object and delete the curve spline, and I'll show how to paint it later. These are the settings that I provided in the modifier properties. The first one is, of course, to select the object that you want to paint on. Then insert the name of the UV map for your selected object. This one here, is the Blender default name for UV map. UV margin is used to extend the border of your UV islands. It helps to avoid visible seam when using the texture output from this setup. This will only be used when you're not using the use baked normal map option. Preview UV map wire will show the wireframe of your UV, to help you paint and place your strokes. Use baked normal map, it will switch to use normal map that you have already baked to be sampled, instead of the default one, captured from the selected object. This is useful if you have modified your normal before painting it using this setup. Baked normal map is to select a baked normal map that you want to use. Preview brush stroke is useful to see the size and shape of the brush stroke. Brush size, adjusts the size of the overall brush stroke. Keep in mind that you can also control the size of the brush stroke in edit mode by changing the radius with Alt plus S. Size ratio changes the shape of your brush. The lower the value, the longer the brush will appear and, the higher the value, your brush will turn into square. Small stroke density changes the density of the brush in the area where the brush size is small. Large stroke density is similar but will do it for the area with larger brush size. Distort position will scatter the brush to give some variations. For most cases, you would only want a small value for this setting. 
Offset by spline index is used to offset the brushes in the z-axis, according to the index, of the curved spline that you have drawn. This is done to prevent the brush plane from clipping to each other. Offset randomly, it has similar purpose as the previous setting but will do it randomly instead, to give a little more variations. Seed, is to randomize the brush stroke and to get slightly different result. Hide background is of course to hide the background. Render option will choose which passes to render. Zero, is the object space normal map. One, is the tangent space normal map. Two, is the random per instance. And, three, is the alpha mask. Material is, yes, to pick which material to use. The preview UV map wire, and preview brush stroke, are temporary settings and will be disabled in the render automatically. It's useful if you forget to turn them off before rendering. Now with the settings explained, let's paint some brushes. Select the curve painter object, and enter the edit mode, and select the draw tool. In the tool settings, I like to use poly option since it works best for me, but both options is compatible with the setup. Now the projection depth, should be set to cursor, and make sure your cursor is in the world origin, or zero in the z-axis. After painting each stroke, you can use Alt plus S to change the radius, and thus, changing the size of the brushes to match the area you're painting on. The nice thing about using this setup is, you don't really need to worry where you place your strokes on, since it will still sample the normal color underneath it. Alright, I'm gonna speed up the painting process from here, since it's just a repeating process of placing stroke and adjusting the size. Alright, the painting process is done. Let's talk about the material now. Go to the shader editor here. There are a few node groups that I've prepared. The brush stroke passes node group, contains all passes that we would render later. The first socket of that group, is where we would plug in the brush alpha mask texture atlas. I've included one that I've created here. This texture is controlled using this pick image tile node group, to choose different tile per brush plane instances. This is one of the tricks that I got from Alan Wyatt, and his live paint filter as I've mentioned. You can even make your own texture. I used Krita to do this. Painted it one by one, and then put it into this 6x6 grid. The first setting in the pick image tile node group, is to choose between point or texture. It has to be the same as the transform type in the mapping node that this group is connected into. The second one, is how many tile in one axis, your texture atlas has. In this case, it's 6 by 6 which totals to 36 tiles. The random input socket, is where you would plug in the random attribute from the geometry nodes. The pick or offset socket, when the random input socket is not connected to anything, it will work to select one single tile, useful if you only want to use the same tile from the texture atlas. And when the random input socket is connected, it will works as some sort of offset. The second socket in brush stroke passes node group, is where you would connect your baked normal map, if you have chosen the option in the modifier settings. And the last node groups here, are these brush strokes attributes, containing the attributes that was captured, and stored from the geometry nodes. I think that is all with the material, now you can render them out and use the results as textures. A quick explanation on how to add another layer of brushes, in case you want to use different alpha mask texture for the brush. Duplicate the curve painter object, move the object above the previous one, enable the hide background option, also, move the camera above all of the brushes, and before you start painting again, in object mode, snap the cursor to the new brush object by pressing shift plus s, and choose, cursor to select it. Now duplicate the material and add a different alpha mask texture.
In the Gumroad download page, I've also included an example scene blend file. Inside the blend file, I show how I use those textures in my shader. I usually use the random texture output to drive the color hue and the roughness variation. And I combine the object space and tangent space normal like this. This is a trick I got from this post on the Blender Artists forum. As a bonus, I'll show you how to achieve this, looping, frame by frame, hand painted feel render. It's not the most ideal way of doing it, and you'll see why. Back to the curve painter setup. I rendered three versions of each passes with different seed value, and to make it easy, I keyframe the render option, and the seed settings like so, and then render them as image sequence, and I renamed the result according to the passes type. Then, I load those images as image sequence, and this is the important part. I set the frames to 1 and enable the auto refresh. In the offset parameter, I will add the hashtag frame driver. And then I will add this formula. Something like this. The A value, is how long one frame will stay until switching to the next one, and the B value, is how many images are in the image sequence. I then add the other image sequences with the same setting. Copy the mentioned driver, and paste them to the other. And yeah, loading those many images is definitely not the most ideal way of doing this, and this is only for one object, I can't imagine using this in a more complex scene. And if with that, we use high resolution textures, it's gonna be really resource demanding. So I don't really recommend doing this, I just used it to showcase the effect. Here are some things to note when using this setup. First, UV seam limitation. Since using this setup, we currently have to paint essentially in 2D space, thus UV seam will be unavoidable, unless, you are being very careful when painting, and avoid painting over the UV boundaries, so be aware of that. Second one is as I mentioned, we're not painting in 3D, like say, using the Blender Texture Painting Mode, or maybe, a dedicated program like Substance Painter. So it's not gonna be easy to tell where the stroke we paint will going to end up on the object. Third, to render the brush strokes, we use EV, and the Alpha Hashed option in the Material Blend Mode. You may encounter this black spot that is caused by these planes clipping to each other. To deal with this, we can just change the seed setting until the problem is gone, or, we can increase the offset by spline index and the offset randomly settings, and then move the camera higher than the strokes. Fourth, another thing about using the alpha hashed, is that, the area where there are transparencies going on, they're gonna be grainy, and the way I know to reduce the problem, is just by increasing the sample count. Not the most ideal I know, but it is what it is unfortunately. Fifth, this setup will not be suitable if your object has UV UDIM, as the setup wasn't created with that in mind, so make sure that the UV islands are all in the same UV tile. And lastly, I found that, this method is going to produce better result, if we use higher resolution texture, since using smaller resolution, we will kind of lose the smaller brush strokes detail that we painted, so keep that in mind. Alright, those are some of limitations and drawbacks of using this setup that I've encountered myself when testing it. There are definitely more to add to this list but I've only tried this with my own workflow, so, this is where you come in, download the setup, test it with your own unique workflow, and, if you stumbled upon problems that can be improved, feel free to send them my way, I can be found with this handle on Twitter, Mastodon, Instagram, or Discord.
so let's do this together. Alright, that is all for this video, and until next time, good night.